the official mugshot of Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows. Meadows just surrendered to Georgia authorities on charges of conspiring to overturn the 2020 election. Meadows was booked and fingerprinted and paid his $100,000 bond as well. Uh, meanwhile, we are, well, joining us now actually is senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky. He is outside the Fulton County Jail where Trump will actually be surrendering, uh, surrendering uh, within a few hours. Mm -hmm. Also, investigative reporter and producer Olivia Rubin nearby at the Fulton County Courthouse is with us. And Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas is here with us in Washington, D.C. So, Aaron, uh, let's begin with you. Uh, Mark Meadows has turned himself in, been arraigned, fingerprinted, got his mugshot. Uh, bring us up to speed. Mark Meadows wanted to avoid surrendering at all, Terry. This is not a moment that he was looking forward to. He asked a federal judge to immediately move his case into federal court so he could try and avoid an arrest here in Fulton County, and a judge wouldn't let him do it. Didn't rule on his request to move the case yet, but said it shouldn't stop him from turning himself in, which is what Meadows did a short while ago, and you saw the mugshot that resulted from it, the $100,000 bond. He had to post 10% of that, like the other defendants associated with this case, and he has been released within the last few minutes, undoubtedly back to wherever, wherever it is he, he came in from. And like the others, he'll have to appear here, we think, in two weeks' time for arraignment. No formal plea by Meadows or any of the other defendants who have turned themselves in yet. Uh, that will come in arraignments the week of September 5th, according to the district attorney's office. So I tell you what, Pierre, in all the years that you have uh, covered the Department of Justice, uh, which of course leads into every type of uh, political uh, discussion we, ha we have had, I mean, this is just unprecedented times, what we are witnessing. I mean, the GOP frontrunner about to be arrested for the fourth time in one year. Kira, I think it's, it's a fascinating moment. And I was sitting here sort of contemplating, again, Donald Trump coming into a jail-like facility, courthouse, whatever you want to call it, and uh, surrendering himself, being booked uh, for the fourth time. And it's remarkable in this sense in that you've had prosecutors in Washington with the special counsel, uh, in New York uh, with the district attorney, and now uh, the Fulton County district attorney uh, basically saying that these politicians, including the former president of the United States, did something that went beyond hardball politics, did something that went beyond uh, dirty politics, that they committed criminal acts in order to keep the former president in office, in power. Uh, it's something that we've never seen before. Uh, we'll have to see how it plays out in a court of law, whether they can get convictions or not. But that's essentially what we're witnessing, uncharted territory, uncharted waters uh, involving, you know, some of the household faces and names that we've seen tied to politics in recent years. Mm. Absolutely, Pierre. Other countries have gone through this kind of thing where former leaders have been indicted and jailed, Argentina, Brazil, but they tend to be going through unhappy periods. It's a, it's a whatever you think of the merits of the case, it's, it's not great when countries have to do this. Uh, and lem Olivia, let me go to you back in the practicalities. What is the timeline here now that uh, these defendants have all come in as of tonight when Donald Trump is expected to do so? What does the judge and, and, and the prosecutor hope uh, to accomplish in terms of when they can try this case? Well, quite frankly, Terry, the timeline of this case is exactly what is at issue here right now once the surrenders are all complete. And that begins actually with the arraignment. The district attorney has asked for an arraignment, as Aaron mentioned, on September 5th, but the judge has yet to weigh in and most of the defendants have yet to weigh in on that. So the arraignment is the first thing on the table. And then the, the issue of the timing of the trial is the second thing. So the Fulton County DA has now asked for an October 23rd trial, something that is just two months away. And the former president has already pushed back on that timeline and is already looking to sever his case from another defendant that is seeking a speedy trial here. So two very different tracks. You have one defendant looking to get this done as quickly as possible and the DA following the lead on that. And then you have former President Donald Trump, who we know likes to delay, 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 saying, we're going this other route. So the timing, Terry, becomes front and center here as there are multiple different perspectives on how this is going to go. All right, Olivia, we'll stay tuned. Aaron and Pierre, thanks very much as well.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.